name's Fran and you're watching a retouching tutorial for tipsquirrel.com. So last week I taught you how to add snow to your winter images using the snow asset that I created for the tutorial. But today I'm going to teach you how to create snow from scratch so that you can use those in your winter imagery. So let's get started with the tutorial. So here you'll see some images that I got from pexels.com which is a royalty free website so if you do wish to download these you can do. I'll leave the link in the description. But first we want to create our snow so we're going to go to file and new. I'll get an A5 sized canvas here, click OK. I'm going to want it landscape so we're going to rotate that. So we're going to get a brush and we're going to get a hard edge brush here. Make sure your foreground is on black. And then on this page, I'm just going to place a few dots here, which is going to represent our snow. I'm going to go for something like that. And I'm going to go to edit and define brush preset. I'm going to call that snow. Click OK. I'm going to close that down because we don't need that. OK, so once you've got your brush, we're going to go to brush settings here, the brush panel. And there'll be a bunch of settings here with various different sliders on. And at the bottom, you've got a live preview of how it's going to turn out. So I'm going to click on shape dynamics. I'm going to have 100% size jitter, which will create um, different sizes throughout all of the little bits of circles that we have drawn. Minimum diameter, I'll push that up as well. Let's create some angle jitter here, a little bit of roundness jitter. But not too much because we don't want all of the elements to be oval. I'm going to bump up the minimum roundness. Now we'll go to scattering and we'll really boost that up there. Uh, not so much for count because that's going to create loads of snow and it's going to look unrealistic. But I will boost the count jitter. Then I'm going to go to transfer and this is where the snow is going to get a little bit more realistic because we're going to boost up the opacity jitter which as you can see we've got darker areas and lighter areas which is brilliant because that's really how snow falls and of course when you shoot snow you'll have bits that are further towards the camera which will be darker and obviously the further away ones will be lighter and, and more blended in into your scene bump up the flow as well and I'm pretty much done there so let's take a look at what that looks like here so that looks pretty cool obviously it's not realistic but I like the the bouquet effect that it's got here so I'm going to click and delete that layer. Let's create a new layer and this is where the building up of snow is going to take place. So in the very background we're going to have smaller pieces of snow and as we get closer towards the camera they're going to get bigger. So let's reduce the size of our brush. I'm just going to create a few bits, create some smaller bits of snow here. something like that and they are way in the distance so what I'm going to do is going to reduce the opacity just a bit maybe 50% and I'm going to blur these so we're going to go to filter and I'm going to convert these to smart filters just in case I want to change these at a later date click OK filter blur and Gaussian or Gaussian blur and let's call that five. Like I said before, it's on a smart filter. So if we did want to come back and change that, we just double click on the effect and we can change it. So 
so let's create another layer and this is going to be snow which is a bit further to the camera probably not that much probably about there we're just going to have a few bits not loads just a couple of bits there and again we're going to blur that so we're going to go to filter and convert for smart filters click OK then we're going to go on filter blur Gaussian blur and again we'll put maybe three pixels for that maybe four actually click OK and then lastly we're going to create bigger pieces of snow which I'm just going to have a few here we're not going to have loads great and filter convert smart filters click OK filter blur Gaussian blur and probably maybe like two two or three for that one because these are close to the camera we're going to add a little bit of motion blur to that so we're going to go to blur motion blur I'm going to create a bit of an angle and blur these. As you can see, it's starting to blur these. So, we're probably going to go to about there. Click OK. I might actually do this with the second layer as well. So, so to do this, you can either go to filter and motion blur command F if you've just used that filter if you haven't and it was a while ago what you can do is if you want the exact same effect you can hold down alt and on that effect and drag it to the layer you want the same effect on and as you can see they're both there and maybe I don't want as much motion blur so I'm just going to tame that down a little bit there click OK and there we go that's our effect now I'm probably going to change the opacity on some of these just to bring them down just a touch but I'm really happy with that and what you can do instead of recreating this process over and over again you could maybe merge those in their own group and then copy them to another document or another image so I'm going to create the group right click duplicate group I'm going to pop these, say, on the uh, fox image here. Click OK. And there we go. It's on that image as well. If you're not happy with some of the snow on the image as well, you can always create a mask and get a soft edge brush and just remove the snow that you don't want on your subject. But that's looking pretty nice so on this image I'm going to create another snow effect using the same techniques but we're going to use a lot more motion blur as if the snow was really really falling down quite heavily so I'm going to create a brand new layer get my brush tool select the snow effect I'm going to have it on quite a small brush and I'm going to paint snow all across here doesn't really matter where I'm going to create some small ones as well This can be all on the same layer. Okay. Then we'll go to filter, convert to smart filters, filter, blur, motion blur. And it's just a case of sort of messing around with the motion blur until you're quite happy with the effect probably going to go for something like that I'm going to give it a little bit of Gaussian blur as well 
And then we're going to get another layer. I'm just going to keep building up on top of the snow here. Okay, and again, convert for smart filters, click OK, filter, blur, and motion blur. Probably going to go for something a little bit less this time. Something like that, click OK. Brand new layer again, this time the snow is going to be a bit bigger. Probably going to aim for about four layers here. Filter, convert for smart filters, and then motion blur again. Again, each time making the motion blur a little bit less. Then we're going to get some bigger snow, something like that. Then we go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, click OK. I'm going to add some Gaussian blur to these ones as well. And of course you can change the opacity of these as well, so I'm going to bring that down to about 50. Probably bring them all down to 50 actually, just to help blend in to the scene a bit more. So there we go, that's just another effect of snow there, just to create more motion blur as if this image was taken in a maybe a snow blizzard or a snowstorm. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of creating your own snow from scratch. You can add these to your own winter imagery and we're expecting snow over the next couple of months so these will look great on your winter images. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like, I'd really really appreciate it. If you want to see more from me don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it's absolutely free and you'll be notified about my latest videos. Don't forget to check out tipsquirrel.com for the latest Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And if you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Photoshop Fran and on Twitter at Photoshop Pro. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.